Stephanie Tough Love Brown. Uh, Tough Love is the hardest thing that I go by, but I am also addressed as Stephanie J. Brown as a painter and artist, a visual artist. The exhibit, the exhibit is, I use my painting as a way to heal. And I believe that this is a lot of healing that is on the walls in my exhibit, but it shows more of the triumph, it shows more of the victory, the victorious side of wherever I saw myself at while I was present painting each and every single piece. So it's, it's more about pride, it's about hard work, it's about holding on, it's about, it's about not giving up in some of your darkest moments, but learning how to turn that into light and making it as beautiful as possible. Speaking of holding on, this one is titled Holding On, and it was at a moment, a little background story, in 2019, I went homeless for the entire year, and I was moving from house to house, and finally I came out here to Tennessee. I'm from North Carolina. I came out to Tennessee, and it was uncomfortable for me. It was really uncomfortable, and I needed to have a reminder to say, hold on. And again, it goes back. I love a black background with contrast as far as colors. The colors really pop out of it. But I'm very specific about the colors that I use because they represent the chakras. And whatever chakra I want to activate or whatever chakra I want to hold attention to, to go through that moment is what I paint. So orange was the big thing. And that's my creativity. That's your sacral chakra, your creativity and allowing things to move and flow as an artist, as a creative. And I just needed it to move. And I always emphasize the third eye with any color, whatever color I'm feeling. And that's the crown chakra, this purple, this purple color is to activate the crown chakra and to always be enlightenment, to always reflect on the moment that you have right then and there, to always be at your highest self. So everything is, and she's looking up. I'll get my references from like Google and I just turn them into how I see it. The colors, uh, shaping out the faces and making our nose and our cheekbones and our lips very predominant. I really, I'm very prof proud of the, my background and our people, my people. So I emphasize that in my work as well, for sure. This one's a, a later piece, well, more recent piece. And yeah, man, I feel like everybody is kind of an advocate now you know, for peace at the end of the day. It's not, about, it's not about your habit. It's about looking for peace at the end of the day. It's about having cool vibes, and this one's titled Cool Vibes. And just the rich tones on it, but again, just to keep it cool. Like, don't let anything get you stressed out. And just always, again, think about your, the third eye, and the yellow is joy, it's happiness, it's a happy color. So always keep it cool, keep it happy, and keep it, you know, Keep it royal at the end of the day. You know, always be your higher self. That's what that one reminded me of. And I like, I love our men, I love our people. It's not about men, it's not about women. Some of my pieces are androgynous in, in the fact that you don't necessarily see a gender. It's just a face, it's a beautiful face. And I might accentuate the eyelashes more if I want it to be feminine, and I might just make it masculine at the end of the day. So it's whatever the, whatever fits you, when you see these pieces, you'll gravitate to whatever is, is your current state or how you feel about yourself. So that's why I, the reactions I get from people, they just like pick their pieces and they're, they're stuck with it. And they don't know why they're stuck to it. They just, they feel connected to the piece and somehow. You can go to this guy, my favorite guy. I always like to put him on blast. This is feared only because I'm so proud of all this hair <laughs> that's on here that not supposed to touch any of these, but it makes you want to touch it because it is soft. It's a lot of work, and this is a, a friend of mine back home who I just, they were just amazing to me. Just in the fact that we have been friends for a long time. They've been through a lot. He's Haitian and Dominican, so it's, it's the, the piece itself comes with a poem. I have about three texture pieces that came with poems, and he's the last one out of the three. Uh, the other ones, they're out in different states. But uh, fear, fear only speaks on the fact that he's intelligent, he is bold, he is still strong 
and takes care of his family and holds it down for himself and everyone else outside of himself. That's what makes him feared. Because we need more of our men. We have plenty of men who do this already. But this one is just to represent the ones that are out there and they're making a way for themselves. And I mean, a military vet and this man was just amazing. He's just done it all. And the fact that he came, he lived in Haiti. And to go from not wearing shoes every day as a child and abused to having stocks, having your own business, having the dreams that you want to accomplish come to reality, that's just something that's feared. And that's feared in anybody and anyone who can't really see that in themselves. So if we can celebrate the ones that do see it in themselves and the ones that put it out there, they just need to have a painting done of them. So <laughs> I just want to do a painting of them and just represent the men who are out there, the brothers who are out here actually doing something. And they're on it. They're on it. And we need to celebrate them in more than being feared of them. We need to celebrate them. But he's a bad guy, you know. He's a good guy in the bad sense, you know, in a, in a good sense that, you know, your eyes are on him and he's respected at the end of the day. I just get zoned out on something. I don't necessarily like take up the time to think of hours. I know it probably at least, I'm very meticulous. I'm very big on details. I used to do hair, so I know to like, these are tracks that are put in. So if anyone, you know what a track is, it's just synthetic hair or human hair glued onto an actual track and you can just glue it on there. And it's, I, I would cut, I had like six big packs of hair and I would just measure it out and cut it and then just glue it on there. And they're like stacked on top of each other. And that's why it's so thick. And the inspiration, I painted his beard already. So it's like acrylic underneath this and it's an actual full picture. I was like, I just, it's not doing it any justice for it to be so flat. I was like, it's gotta be something on it because his beard was really like that. And you could take your fingers and just play through and I wanted that same thing for people to feel like I really want to touch his beard. <laughs> like beard gang, so. Uh, activism, so I played a big part in my HIV activism. Uh, my entire 20s was geared towards HIV activism and I made this piece to represent PEPFAR, a President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief and uh, it represents all of the countries in Africa that were receiving aid as far as AIDS and HIV. They were receiving medication. And there's a big truth that I wanted to, that I did get out as far as HIV and AIDS and the fact that there still wasn't any answers to it. There still wasn't anything done. And for it to be 30 plus years, we still didn't get it cured. There were a lot of things that we don't see as far as behind the closed doors, as, as far as medication. The medication is indeed toxic, and that's something that we don't talk about when it comes to the health field or health care. We had to think about the patients. We had to think about the people who are actually living through it and going through it, and what it's like to be in an impoverished area, for one, and receive medication that's really toxic. And then the mental health was taken out of care. So it's all of these layers that have happened that leave people depressed at the end of the day, that leave people that feel like they, they don't matter, that they don't have a voice, they're not being represented well, they're not being taken care of. Like we can't forget about those people. And that's where it's just a pride again, going back to African-American pride and the fact that we are gold. I love to use gold, it represents royalty to me. So to always outline it, I outline it in gold to represent that royalty and to not forget about the faces that we have to focus on more when it comes to healthcare and what really matters. And it's just not, it's not about just medical adherence. It's about adhering to your mental and your spiritual and your emotional health, as well as a victim of HIV and AIDS or any health disparity. It is not geared to just one health disparity. We need to take account of what it looks like as an entire picture when you're living with a health disparity. So I, I made a piece that's like a sister piece to this to represent, represent those out in Haiti who were ostracized, who were then pushed out of the US, trying to just live a better life. And they were, they were forced out of the US. They were labeled AIDS, so it's, you kind of put them in this pocket or in this 
this corner. Society, the United States put them in this pocket and in this corner and told everyone not to help them. And they needed the most help at the time. So it's, again, not to forget those that really matter and to look at it on the outside besides health, health uh, a medical adherence or just the health care. We got to look at really what the health care system is and like really digest it and to learn that we have the capabilities of answering a lot of questions and solving a lot of problems, but we just have to start taking care of our minds and our bodies. Whatever the, the mind believes, the body follows. And if we believe that we can't take care of ourselves as people individually and we allow somebody else to do it, then we, we lose the fight. Just don't lose the fight. So. I had a friend who was a barber back home and he committed suicide. And it wasn't after, it wasn't the fact that he did 20 plus years in prison. It was because someone broke up with him. It was a breakup and he committed suicide. And he was one of the most bubbliest. He filled a room on his personality alone. Amazing person. But because his mental health wasn't taken care of, he took his own life. And no one saw it coming. Because you can wear a mask all day and you don't address the issue. You can have friends around you all day. But if you're not taking care of yourself when you get home, then you, again, it's about not losing the fight. So I just want to remind everyone in every piece that I do not to lose the fight. Mental health is real, and we don't address it as much as we need to when it comes to men. And again, it's just going back to representing the men, uh, representing and honoring the masculinity, uh, representing and, and honoring the, the masculine um, energy that comes, that's needed. And it can't be subtracted from any equation because the feminine and masculine, they're both needed. It's always a balance. There's a balance in nature that we have to honor. And it's just as much as we give a women's empowerment, attention, we need to give it to men as well so that we don't lose them. So this is an honor. Um, this is representing a, a friend of mine. That's where that came out of. I just knew I immediately need to do a piece once I, I got the message that he had passed away. This is when I was out here already. So I wasn't able to attend the funeral. I had a, a few men in my life as friends who just passed away within the last two, three years. So, and it's all geared to, towards mental health, whether they have an addiction <clears throat> or they just had a really rough life and they just felt like they didn't have anybody to talk to. So I hope now that we can, we have more of that and I'm starting to see more uh, attention around men's mental health. Shout out to Kendrick Lamar, uh, who just put out an album that was around men's mental health. Uh, all the artists and creators who kind of help us remind us to remind us that this is healing for us. That the art that we do is healing. And um, we're just trying to help people in our visuals <laughs> at the end of the day. So, yeah. I hope this exhibit really helps other people to be empowered and to feel a sense of pride about yourself when you walk in here and the colors. The colors are really going to captivate you and connect you to the piece. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I think it's really the colors that are gonna gravitate and then you find your message. So I hope you find your message in every single piece that you, you experience here. In closing, <laughs> uh, I would like to thank the, muse the museum. I want to thank you. Uh, thank you, Terry, who connected with me and has this up. And I hope that everyone takes a part in the bold expressions here expressed by Stephanie J. Brown, AKA Stephanie Tufla Brown. And again, thank you. Thank you to the opportunities and thank you to everyone who's taking the time out to already see it. And, and don't miss it.